Hi folks, we're in our garden and it's always a pleasure to see the garden giant mushroom, Stropharia rugoso annulata, popping up. And this is also fun, the rocks were here and this is the winter savory herbs and the mushrooms popped up right where the herbs are. That oftentimes happens, the condensation of moisture collects uh, at the base of the plants and the mushrooms form. Now it's called Stropharia rugoso annulata. Stropharia means sword belt, so there's a membranous ring here, otherwise known as the annulus. Um, and on top, the upper reaches of this annulus, if you could see, going very closely, is a secondary tier of ridges. Those actually have basidian spores on them. That's why it's called rugoso annulata, ridges on the ring. Hmm. I can imagine a song coming on. So this is a edible and choice mushroom. It produces very, very thick rhizomorphs. And this is a wandering species. Once you get in the garden, it literally can be here for years. So, and interestingly, this mushroom produces uh, acanthocytes. And these are little spiny um, um, units that spear n nematodes. And so this mushrooms, like oyster mushrooms, is a species known to consume um, n nematodes. So we're gonna pick it here and I'm gonna it's always fun. You never know what you're going to see until you pop it up. So I, I'm trying to get the base of it because we can regrow this mushroom from the stem butts. Whoa. <laughs> um, and those are solid. So this is a mushroom that has a cashew-like herb flavor. Uh, Strophoria rugosa annulata should not be eaten more than three days in a row. This has come to us through experience and also known in Europe. So the, the basically it's difficult to digest them the third day. So a great mushroom for the garden and for the table. And it comes up prodigiously for many years. So once you plant one patch, it spreads around. But we'll take the stem butts and we can take these rhizomorphs and regrow them into wood chips. And we'll have naturalized spawn. Spawn that has an immune system because it's directly in contact with the microorganisms of the soil. So it's been able to pr produce uh, antibodies that sets up the rhizomorphs for continued growth. And uh, then it selects out a guild. Oh! And it's a beautiful wine red color. That's why it's also called the wine cap mushroom. So, but... As I was saying, the mycelium sets up a, a guild of microorganisms that are conducive for its growth and competitive to pathogenic bacteria and other competitor fungi. Anyhow, garden giants by their nature are wanderers. And so you inoculate over there and they fruit over here. So these are just gorgeous right now. And moving this pot, ugh, look at the mycelial network. It's just... Such luxurious mycelium. And it's rhizomorphic mycelium, it's white. And these garden giants are being produced and gorgeous. And this one in particular has a beautiful membranous annulus. It has ridges on the gills. That's why it's called rugoso annulata, Stropharia rugosa annulata, the garden giant. And we have some more garden giant volunteers coming up and these will quadruple in the next uh, two days and where else will they be coming up this is the, the way of garden giants is they surprise you by they look like little red bricks oftentimes i've had several friends that say they thought they were red stones and then they touched them they were cold and had a, the feeling of a mushroom so I love cultivating garden giants. It's the least amount of work and the most amount of fun for the long term. The advantage and disadvantage of the garden giant is it grows so rapidly. So here are some specimens that are past their prime. These are not really good to eat. But over here, we have gorgeousness. These are amazing. And they're at the perfect stage to consume. And so we'll pop them out underneath and that is ideal when the veil is still closed in the burgundy color this is when the mushrooms are the best flavored and with the garden giant interestingly 
the flavor is best with the younger mushrooms and it definitely fades as the mushrooms mature. So this is ideal, the garden giant. Hi folks, I can't believe Pam, my friend, talked me into this, but we are going to eat the garden giant mushroom. And garden giant mushrooms um, are fairly mellow in their flavor, but they do really well with nuts. And so first I'm gonna use a high temperature avocado oil and heat this up, nice and red hot there. And then I'm gonna add walnut oil on top. Um, this is very pretty potent. And be heating up very quickly. And then I'm gonna add cashews. So here's a bunch of cashews on there. The cashews and the garden giant really combine well. And I'm gonna let this um, saute for a few minutes, kind of brown the nuts. And as they are cooking, I'm gonna add some onions. Um, I'm a really big lover of onions. Some of my friends think I love them too much. So I'm gonna caramelize the, uh, the onions with the nuts. And I'm good. And then I'm gonna add a few sesame seeds. So kind of, this is kind of like a three nut marriage with the garden giant. Cashews, walnut oil, and sesame. So we're gonna stir this for a while, and in the meanwhile, I'm gonna start cutting up these garden giant mushrooms, which are perfect. The veils are intact. They're burgundy colored. It's also known as a wine cap. And these garden giant mushrooms have very thick flesh. And look at that. The vast majority of that tissue is flesh. And when you get them when they're expanded, then what happens is the thickness of the cap becomes gills, which becomes spores. So you lose culinary, you know, uh, flesh from mushrooms becoming older. So the younger mushrooms are the best. So come back in a minute and we'll begin the process in a minute. Okay, we've caramelized the onions and um, the cashews here. And now we're gonna add our garden giant mushrooms. And they're gonna release a lot of water. Mushrooms are about 90% water. So, look at we slice them. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I just love the, uh, the iconic shapes of mushrooms. They know they're very, you know, I think central to some of our embedded you know, mythical histories. And, so, we'll do this and then we'll cover them up because we don't want all the moisture to come off right away. We'll soften the mushrooms and we'll stir them back and forth. And then we'll come back in a few more minutes. A little bit of salt, just a tad. Okay, we're, here we are. Take it out and I'm gonna, it's pretty hot here. I put some on a cracker with a cashew and that should do it. Mm. And then, exactly 100 milliliters of homemade red wine. This is essential. It is true, red wine and the garden giant go together. It's also called the wine cap, so interesting coincidence. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned. We're gonna be cooking some more mushrooms soon. Hi, fungal files. Now, this is the next day, and you'll notice that the mushrooms have actually continued to grow after picking. This is really interesting. And it, now the cap is more flat. So I'm gonna make a spore print. I'm gonna cut the flesh here. And I'm gonna then wanna simply put it down on a piece of white paper. 
Now, to minimize air currents, you can put a bowl over this. And then the next day, we'll look at the spore print. And from the spore print, you can generate cultures. Also, it's just great as a form of mushroom art. I love spore prints as art. Thanks.